Raphael Robb, an economics professor at the University of Pennsylvania, became the center of a notorious criminal case in December 2006. Robb, a respected academic, was charged with the brutal murder of his wife, Ellen Gregory Robb. He initially called 911 reporting a home invasion, but inconsistencies in his story and forensic evidence led investigators to suspect him. Despite his intellectual standing and prominent position, Raphael Robb was unable to distance himself from the crime. In November 2007, he pleaded guilty to voluntary manslaughter, stating that he lost control during an argument. The case exposed a horrifying picture of domestic abuse, revealing that even highly educated and publicly admired individuals could harbor such dark secrets. This tragedy, highlighting the frighteningly intimate nature of many homicides, continues to provoke discussion about domestic violence awareness and prevention. Born into a family running a tailoring shop in Israel on October 31, 1950, Raphael Robb was fortunate to grow up in an environment that fostered intellectual curiosity and a love for learning. Recognizing his exceptional academic abilities, his parents provided unwavering support as he embarked on his educational journey. Raphael Robb's quest for knowledge led him to the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, where he earned his bachelor's degree. Motivated by a deep interest in economics, he pursued further education at UCLA, ultimately attaining a Ph.D. in the field. In 1984, at the age of 34, Raphael Robb joined the esteemed faculty of the University of Pennsylvania, where he quickly distinguished himself as a tenured professor. His particular area of expertise lay in game theory, a branch of mathematics used to analyze strategic decision-making in political, economic, and military contexts. With his sharp mind and keen insights, Raphael Robb contributed significantly to the field, publishing numerous papers on game theory and various other economic subjects. His collaborations extended across borders, working alongside scholars from Greece, Israel, Japan, and the United States. The impact of Raphael Robb's research and contributions to economics was duly recognized within the academic community. As a testament to his achievements, he was honored as a Fellow of the Econometric Society, an esteemed distinction bestowed upon economists who have made outstanding contributions to the discipline. Through his extensive body of work and intellectual prowess, Raphael Robb left an indelible mark on the field of economics, influencing the understanding of strategic decision-making and earning a place among the most accomplished economists of his time. Raphael Robb's genius was not confined within the bounds of traditional academia. He was a dynamic communicator, able to explain complex economic theories with ease and lucidity. His teaching style was lively and engaging, which earned him immense popularity among students and faculty alike. As he progressed in his career, he moved into positions at some of the world's most prestigious universities, becoming a renowned and celebrated academic figure. Ellen's upbringing unfolded in Rosemont, Pennsylvania, where she resided with her mother and two brothers. Tragedy struck her life at a tender age, as she lost her father when she was merely seven years old. Determined to pursue her dreams, Ellen took on the responsibility of financing her college education by juggling three jobs. Through hard work and perseverance, she managed to carve a path for herself in the retail industry, ultimately assuming the role of a sales manager. In the year 1987, fate intervened, and Ellen's life took a momentous turn. She crossed paths with Raphael Robb, an esteemed economics professor, after connecting through a dating service. Their connection flourished, leading to their union in matrimony in 1990. The love they shared culminated in the birth of their daughter, Olivia, in 1994. However, the tranquility of their lives was abruptly shattered during the holiday season. On the eve of Christmas, 
specifically on December 22, 2006, Raphael dialed the authorities, burdened with disconcerting news. He informed the police that he had discovered Ellen's lifeless body seated at the kitchen table in their residence situated in Upper Marion Township, Pennsylvania. Shockingly, her face bore unrecognizable features, displaying severe signs of trauma. Initially, law enforcement surmised that the cause was a gunshot wound due to the extensive damage inflicted. However, a subsequent autopsy unearthed a different truth a truth that revealed Ellen had suffered from blunt force trauma. Moreover, defensive wounds on her hands further reinforced the notion that the incident may have originated from a failed burglary, given the presence of a shattered window pane. Upon conducting a thorough investigation, the authorities came to the conclusion that the crime scene had been deliberately arranged to resemble a burglary. Although a window pane had been shattered, no valuable items were missing from the house. The presence of blood spatter on the kitchen cabinets and ceiling indicated a violent attack had taken place. Naturally, suspicion turned towards Raphael, Ellen's spouse of 16 years. During his statement to the police, Raphael claimed that he had last seen Ellen at approximately 8.30 a.m. while she was wrapping Christmas presents in the kitchen. He then proceeded to drop off their daughter, Olivia, at school, run errands at local stores, and subsequently head to the university. Forensic findings revealed that Ellen's injuries were not caused by a shotgun blast, but rather by crushing blows from a long, thin object, aligning with Raphael Robb's initial description of her head as cracked. Montgomery County District Attorney Bruce Castor contemplated the possibility of a rage killing, driven by sudden passion and deep hatred for the victim. It was likely a case of manslaughter, driven by a man with no prior criminal record pushed to the edge of madness. Raphael stated that he returned home around noon only to discover Ellen's lifeless body. Initially, his alibi appeared to be corroborated by surveillance footage showing him at a nearby convenience store. However, law enforcement officers found the sequence of events rather peculiar. Raphael had lingered in front of the camera for an extended period, merely sipping on a soda. Other inconsistencies emerged as investigators delved deeper, including contradictions about the state of their marriage and the sequence of events. After gathering information from Ellen's loved ones, the authorities identified Raphael as a primary suspect. According to Ellen's family, problems arose in her relationship with Raphael shortly after their marriage. Ellen had previously voiced concerns about his controlling behavior. Over time, the couple grew apart and began residing in separate bedrooms. Ellen's brother even alleged that Raphael subjected her to verbal and psychological abuse. On one occasion, Ellen confided in a friend about her husband giving her a black eye. In October 2006, she sought legal advice and contemplated filing for divorce. Subsequently, Raphael was apprehended and charged with first-degree murder. In November 2007, just days before his trial was slated to commence, Raphael confessed to the crime. He recounted a heated argument with Ellen over their holiday plans, which escalated into a violent altercation. Raphael stated, We started discussing it. The conversation became tense. We were both feeling anxious. Both of us became angry. At one point, Ellen pushed me. I just lost control. Raphael used a chin-up bar as a bludgeoning weapon, resulting in Ellen's tragic demise. He then disposed of the weapon and blood-stained clothing in a trash bin located in Philadelphia. Raphael Robb, a leading expert in game theory, had gained significant academic recognition by the time he committed the murder of his wife. Ranked in the top 5% of economists globally, Raphael Robb's expertise in game theory allowed him to analyze human decision-making and strategize for positive outcomes. Game theory, applicable to various scenarios, 
even legal cases, and negotiations, became a crucial factor in the investigation of Raphael Robb's actions. Bruce Castor, the district attorney on the case, had to determine whether Raphael Robb's meticulous mindset led to premeditated murder or manslaughter, as he arrested and charged Raphael Robb with first-degree and third-degree murder. Detectives uncovered a motive centered around money, as Raphael Robb stood to lose financially in a pending divorce and sought to protect his financial security and relationship with his daughter. The evidence, including altered timelines, staged burglaries, slip UPS in conversation, and forensic analysis indicating overkill, pointed towards premeditation. Despite the gravity of the case, Castor made a surprising announcement during that time, revealing his candidacy for higher office as a Montgomery County commissioner, garnering widespread attention and publicity. Criminal defense attorney Frank Desimone recognized the uniqueness of his new client, Raphael Robb, who had extensively researched Desimone's cases and was aware of the prosecutor's defeat against him in a previous trial. Castor, the prosecutor, had concerns about the absence of direct physical evidence and the potential influence of the family dog in the case. There were two possibilities, Raphael Robb either killed his wife impulsively and cleaned up before the dog could investigate, or he planned the murder in advance, securing the dog beforehand. Despite maintaining his innocence, Raphael Robb eventually agreed to consider a plea deal of voluntary manslaughter. Castor's concerns centered around the lack of solid physical evidence, as jurors were increasingly influenced by the CSI culture and expected hard science. After months of deliberation, Raphael Robb granted permission for a plea deal to be pursued, and when the details were finalized, Desimone presented the deal to him. Given the potential consequences of a murder trial, Raphael Robb, aged 57, calculated the costs and benefits and chose to accept the plea deal, which could result in his release after a shorter sentence. This decision also provided him with an opportunity to shape the legal narrative surrounding his wife's death, as the construction of the case largely fell to the one responsible for her demise. Raphael Robb's guilty plea in November 2007 outlined the agreed-upon facts of the case, admitting to a heated argument with his wife that escalated, leading him to lose control and fatally strike her with a chin-up bar. The plea agreement spared the Gregory family from a trial but portrayed Ellen as complicit, downplaying crucial evidence such as the absence of a murder weapon. Raphael Robb's sentencing in November 2008 witnessed a contentious portrayal of Ellen's character by the defense, presenting her as mentally unstable, while the Gregorys felt their attempts to refute these claims were stifled. During the sentencing, differing perspectives emerged, with Castor advocating for a 20-year sentence while Judge Tressler considered factors such as Raphael Robb's health condition, leaning towards a lower sentence range of 5 to 10 years. Art Gregory's impactful letter was presented, potentially influencing the final decision. On the other hand, Raphael Robb penned a letter to his daughter, providing a glimpse into his distinctive thought process and perspective. Raphael Robb had been calling Olivia from prison, coaxing her to send him a report card and photo of herself. Hi honey, just to make it easier for you I am enclosing a self-stamped slash self-addressed envelope. All you have to do is print out pictures of you, make a copy of your report card, enclose them in the envelope, and drop it in a mailbox. In return you will have your holiday gift coming to you in no time. I'd hate to delay sending you the gift, but I won't do so unless I get these items. Remember also that I will be shipped out of the area soon. So if you don't send the items within a day or two, I won't get them for months, if at all. Won't the love of money propel you into action? Love and kisses. Dad. The economist likely sought to show a warm relationship. Olivia didn't comply. 
Judge Tressler gave Raphael Rob a sentence of 5 to 10 years, noting his manipulative nature but rejecting the plea for a longer term. Disappointingly, Prosecutor Castor failed to establish a case for Raphael Robb's potential role in causing Ellen's mental health struggles or recognize the patterns of domestic violence in their relationship. Gary Gregory, reaching out to experts, discovered the common signs of abuse, early generosity giving way to control, financial manipulation, rudeness toward the victim's family, escalating abuse, and the danger faced by the victim when attempting to leave. Domestic violence experts see Raphael Robb as an average criminal, utilizing techniques of coercion and control, rather than a man provoked into a sudden act of violence. Raphael Robb ultimately achieved his favorable outcome. He avoided trial on first-degree murder charges by negotiating a manslaughter plea that cast his wife as provocateur. Rather than risk rotting in jail, Raphael Robb served just 10 years. Now he lives in a Pittsburgh suburb in a cluttered second-floor apartment in a cheerless building and under a cloud of questions, to what extent did his brilliant mind factor into the crime and his favorable plea deal? Was manslaughter the appropriate charge, or did he plot to kill his wife? Meanwhile, Gary still fights for his sister to establish what really happened to her, and to expose what he believes to be the true nature of his brother-in-law, the economist who gamed the legal system and won. Amid Rob's release, Ellen's family expressed profound distress, and Gary Gregory, her brother, emphasized the crucial need for accountability during a press conference held outside the Pennsylvania home where the tragic murder occurred. He voiced grave concerns about Rob reintegrating into society without facing appropriate consequences, emphasizing the significance of preserving his sister's memory and preventing it from fading into oblivion. In a separate civil suit, a jury had previously rendered a verdict ordering Rob to pay a substantial $124 million in damages to his daughter, Olivia Rob, who was only 12 years old when her mother was brutally taken from her. Determined to ensure Olivia receives the awarded compensation, Gary Gregory alleged that Rob possesses retirement funds totaling at least $3 million, vowing to take necessary steps for its collection. Citing Rob's lack of remorse, Gregory asserted that the murder was a premeditated act calculated to safeguard his assets, painting a troubling picture of a man driven by self-interest even in the face of such a tragic loss. The family's resolute pursuit of justice and financial restitution underscores their unwavering commitment to honor Ellen's memory and secure a semblance of accountability in the aftermath of this heartbreaking crime. The Raphael Robb case presents two contrasting narratives, one that views him as a mastermind who left no direct physical evidence and secured a lenient sentence, and another that portrays him as less intelligent and highlights the weak alibi and suspicious burglary scene. In the latter narrative, Raphael Robb's actions appear driven by luck and his interaction with prosecutor Bruce Castor, who may have been influenced by personal factors and the sight of Raphael Robb's hoarded house. His outlook and motivation stood in stark contrast to those who valued love and family, shedding light on why he and Ellen were never well suited. The story of Raphael Robb serves as a potent reminder that success, no matter how dazzling, can be ephemeral. For all his intellectual accomplishments and personal wealth, Raphael Robb was unable to escape the consequences of his actions. His fall from grace serves as a stark contrast to his rise to fame, a vivid illustration of how one's fortunes can change dramatically and swiftly. It is a narrative about the transient nature of success, the power of reputation, and the importance of integrity in all aspects of life. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe.